Should be good. Hey everyone, can you hear me? Hey Edward, how are you doing today? 11 people in the room, wow. Of course, Joel didn't email his list and, oh, now I gotta kill the volume. We're live. So as, as most of you know, Joel's in Australia. He's actually uh, he's flying back right now as we, uh, as we speak. There we go. And so I'm filling in today. Last week I was sick, miserably sick with the stomach flu. I don't know if anybody you had that, but it was not fun. And the worst part was that I was in Florida last weekend uh, at a uh, landing page workshop that Marketing Sherpa put on and I became a certified landing page professional which was pretty easy actually um, but I flew back with the flu um, with two flights and a two hour drive it was not fun but uh, I'm here today and uh, Joel will be back next week uh, but today we're just gonna you know we have 12 people in the room now and we're gonna talk basically about internet marketing and I'll answer your questions I got a couple things to show you we have our top 10 list today uh, only one monkey today, and as you can see, I sort of cleared the desk of the toys that I really find a little bit annoying. Thanks, Edward. <laughs> but uh, let's just start right off the bat. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask me? And uh, we'll just get started today. <laughs> or not. All right, well, I'm going to start. And... Um, I want to show you guys something because basically, like I said, I, I, I spent uh, two days at this landing page workshop and we learned all about copy and best practices for doing landing pages. And your landing page is literally everything from a squeeze page to your actual website. And uh, one of the things that I, I've known for a while and I sort of you know, got reaffirmed while I was down there was that when you get stuff in the mail, uh, People that like big companies that send you these big mailers, like for instance, Prevention Magazine. You know, I'm a subscriber to Prevention Magazine, and they send stuff all the time trying to sell other products. And here's one I got in the mail the other day, and it's basically called the Female Belly Belly Fat Cure. Okay. Now the thing about this magazine is that it's this is like a 16-page, oh, sorry, 23-page magazine, and all it is trying to do is sell you a book that costs like $32. But the thing about it is that the copy is like beautiful in this thing and, and they research and they test and you can see they have the headline, they have the bold the bold words, they have uh, bullet points and they have little things based on breakthrough new science like a little tiny you know, ribbon ad, what they call that on the website and then you open this thing up and it's all just big headlines, you know, there's that, there's a, the dark black headline and they have the light blue subheadline. then they have red and they should use graphics and everything is designed for your eye to follow and when you get a magazine like this you can you can look at the stuff and you can say geez I could do this on my website so easily but what they're doing is they're, they're basically creating they're creating a great uh, great copy here and it's all designed to sell and they're using all the formulas where they just get they get more and more information they're sucking you in and they get to the end and they're, and they're closing and they're giving you a free trial and it, you know, if you take the free trial, they don't bill you, and then you get billed for payments. So, it, once once again, all I'm trying to say is that if you're looking for examples of great copy, just look in your mailbox, and you get these mat catalogs, and you can pick up great ideas on how to uh, write new landing pages for yourself. Edward, question about CPA networks. That is absolutely the one thing that I know very little about. Uh, if you'd like, I can probably bring in Joel Lombi. Uh, he can discuss CPA networks if we're if we're Staying with 13 people, maybe, maybe I'll bring him in if you're going to be the only person asking questions. But uh, I don't do anything at all with CPA networks. Um, we do, uh, for the company wise, we do it with Deal of Day, our dealofday.com site. Uh, they do a lot of uh, a CPA advertising, and, and we do so with some of our products. We're experiment, experimenting, but uh, I can't tell you any secrets there that, uh, that, that I've had, have experience with. Which is better for Managerless Feed Blitz or AWeber? Uh, I would recommend AbWeber. Is that a new fitness uh, autoresponder? Um, AWeber is, in my opinion, definitely uh, better for managing a list. I, you know, I, I have, don't have much experience with Feed Blitz, but I know that most top internet marketers use AWeber. 
Uh, Aweber actually just launched a new uh, service for uh, with optimized with basically analytics. Uh, they give you a lot more data on your lists and response rates and all kinds of information. It's kind of cool. Actually, they have a whole new look too with Aweber. So I do recommend Aweber. Um, $19.95 a month. Manage unlimited lists. Uh, fairly, you know, pretty good. 90% or so delivery rates. Uh, so I recommend Aweber. Yes, Aweber. But at Weber, that's actually not a bad. If that domain's available, I might want to grab that. Okay, what other questions do we have? Anything. Um, oh, Chris, the hand, by the way, Chris, the hand is here. Chris, you want to throw the hand in? So Chris is back as well. Chris was, was sick a couple weeks ago. Tell us more about landing pages. Um, you know, landing pages, there were a couple of great tips that I picked up and um, really simple things are clarity trumps persuasion. We heard this, uh, uh, we got this, this drilled into us. Uh, instead of trying to persuade your customers to buy from you, just really specify what it is you're giving them. Be really clear about your offer. Uh, the clearer you are, um, the more conversions you'll have. And the other thing is to, you know, the, what they say is, you know, this guy was Flint McLaughlin was the guy that spoke and, and one of his things was um, reduce unsupervised thinking, which means don't make your, your customers or your visitors think about what it is that you're offering. You shouldn't, you should be able to overcome any objection so that when they hit your site and then they're not saying, this is, so I wonder what, I wonder if this does that. I wonder if this does that. I wonder if I'll have a problem with this. Think about all the objections and, and, and answer those and the, the more objections that you overcome you know the more your conversions you'll have and also when it comes to the site you know you think about the continuity and flow of the site so that when somebody hits your web page don't don't throw them off with all kinds of a graphic here graphic here you know big bullet point here think about the flow think about their eye flow as they come through the site and use that pattern and you can actually have you know, send let people look at your site and say, "Does this work for you? Did you have any questions? Did you find anything too busy?" And once again, like I said, with Prevention Magazine and and with other things, look at how they're doing their landing pages, and look at how these other people are doing, and, and you'll really pick up a lot of tips uh, because what they've done is they've done their researching, they've done their market testing, um, and this once again, the workshop I went to was a, was a marketing Sherpa. If you uh, if you visit marketingsherpa.com, you can actually join their newsletter and get tons of uh, landing page tips and tons of other information about how to help you with your marketing online. Yes, MLCB. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, I did that brainstorming thing, and uh, I, I can certainly help and anybody that's on here now if they want to do that. What I what I did on stage. Um, I'm always up for doing that. It's basically what I do all day long. But I do need to know, you know, more information about what it is you're doing and there's always a disclaimer that if I shoot off ideas that are that are pretty good that everyone else is gonna hear them too. Uh, but I've done that on stage now with Joel uh, three times. And uh, we're actually considering doing a uh, webinar just with that. So it's something that we're, we're we've been discussing doing a private webinar where I actually uh, you know put people on a hot seat and come up with ideas for their business. So if anyone wants to brainstorm a niche, throw it out there. Just tell me what your niche is. Tell me what you're trying to do. Um, I can even pull up, if you want to pull up a website, we can pull up websites and take a look. Uh, Marketing Sherpa. Here, I'll type it in. This is a tremendous source of uh, free information. And, you know, what they say, you know, basically it's like, you know, they do millions and millions of dollars of research. Uh, covering all aspects of uh, marketing and so you can pick up a ton of information and unfortunately I have a huge stack of newsletters which I, I, I have to get to because there's so much uh, information there. My niche is focusing on the positive aspects. I had uh, somebody ask me about, did, did you talk to me about this dyslexia and marketing madness? Okay, <laughs> I think I made a joke, that's right, I um, yes what was my joke? I was trying to remember. It was, um, I can't remember. Oh yeah, it was AdWords. I was saying that you could, uh, 
just have screwed up AdWords headlines and, and uh, it would it'd call attention to it because the eyes would go to that misspelled headline and draw attention to your AdWords for dyslexia. And which is, you know, it's funny, I hate to say it's, it's not in, like it's in bad taste, but you have to think about um, things that call attention to that right side. So if you're going to run AdWords for something, you know, you, the eye has to pick up on something. And I, I pick up on a mis I, I pick up on typos like instantly. When I, I can look at a whole web page and see a typo, and, and a lot of people are like that. And so they'll instantly go to that, and they might get a kick out of it and then click and, and, uh, and click the ad. But yeah, we did talk about your niche and the fact that it is a you know huge growing um, problem in this country, and uh, if you're going to address that, uh, especially to our parents on how to deal with it, and uh, you know I think you, you definitely can uh, do a lot with that niche. And you said the positive aspects. You know, once again, if you what, what I try to tell people to do too when you take a niche, you know, start writing an action list about what it is exactly you want to do with your site and what your ultimate goal is. And then you can start focusing on the best way. Hey, Liza. Then you can then you can focus on the best way to uh, to go at that niche. And um, that's what I recommend you do. Is write all that stuff down. I think we talked about that a little bit. Oh boy, sorry you have the stomach flu, Liza. Um, but but focus on where you want to go with that. Or what the best way you think you can make money? Whether it's a book, whether it's a guide, whether it's a membership program for parents that are dealing with dys dyslexia. Um, Hey, yeah, the viewers are going up. You got the homepage. We're on the homepage, apparently. Yeah. Um, so that's basically it. Did you have another question about the, your niche and another way to, to uh, utilize it? I guess not. Well, do you want to do our... Uh, do you want to do our top ten list? Yeah, Can we get that done? People who are just landing on the page. What? Yeah. By the way, if you're just landing on the page, and my name is uh, not Joel Com. My name is Dan Nickerson. Uh, Joel is actually flying back from Australia today, where he spoke at Chris Howard's event uh, in Sydney, and so Joel is is having the long flight back, and he'll be here next Wednesday. But uh, I am his uh, weekly sidekick, Dan Nickerson, and I've been doing internet marketing since 1995, and um, fairly no well known online for what I've been doing for the last 15 years or so. Um, but uh, we're going to go to our top 10 list, which is a weekly top 10 list. And uh, this week's list is the top 10 reasons to watch Joelcom live today and today only. Do you have that ready to queue up? We're ready. Okay, so uh, number 10 reason to watch Joelcom live today is there's much less time playing with freaky toys. Joel has a habit of picking up his little toys, and, and I think that's just slightly disturbing, don't you? Um, number 9. No new monkeys taking up very valuable airtime. Uh, I'm sure Joel will have a new monkey from Australia next week, and who knows, maybe it'll be a, a real one. Uh, but I stick with the, uh, the flying screaming monkey, which we're going to actually uh, shoot off right now. And it's going to be his, his one flight today. And uh, let's see where I can hit. Who, anyone who hasn't seen the flying screaming monkey, you're in for a treat. Because it screams. Uh, Number eight, no questions about Next Internet Millionaire 2. Because every single week, somebody asks, hey, Joel, are you going to do Next Internet Millionaire 2? And the answer is, uh, I'm not even going to go there. Um, number seven, Dan probably won't roll his eyes as much, which has become a trademark, rolling my eyes at bizarre things that happen on this show. Number six, more content, less banter. Because I don't have anybody to banter with today, except uh, Chris the Hand Harper over here. Uh, number five, no questions about Joel's goatee. Yes, he shaved it off well over you know a month ago, and people still ask every week about the goatee. Uh, number four, Dan's a bit hungover. I did happen to go out last night, so anything could happen this week. Uh, number three, cooler prizes and giveaways. I actually have a good, uh, we're going to give away a viral video fever. We're going to give away the whole set of viral video fevers today. And uh, I'll probably also share a link or two with you that uh, you can get some free stuff. Uh, number two, you get to see if Ben Mac buys another sponsorship this week. And I did forget to mention, uh, do we have Ben's uh, link up at all? Uh, not yet. Okay. Ben, uh, ben Mac uh, has bought the last two sponsorships on our show. And uh, because of the numbers, our numbers are way down because Joel's not here and Joel didn't email his list uh, today. Um, we're going to carry that over to next week, so we're not going to do a new sponsorship. Uh, and number one, uh, Dan on a Stick, unfortunately, was destroyed on a, in a fire. So Dan on a Stick will not be making an appearance today. Really sorry about that. And that's the top 10 list here for today. I wonder how that happened.
What, Dan on a stick burning a fire? Yeah, yeah I'm sort of just kidding. I, I could say he was, no, I'm not even going to say he was, he was rubbing with somebody else, okay? <laughs> that could be. <laughs> he was rubbing with, no, never mind. Uh, that's too bad hurt. Uh, suggestions for a membership site, CD, DVD, DVD of the month clubs. Um, are you talking about just creating your own membership site, or are you talking about uh, recommending a site that you can join? Um, yeah, creating your own site. You know, uh, a friend of mine, Scott Stamper, actually just, uh, I don't know, I don't have the link. He just launched a, uh, a book, too, about membership sites, which is pretty good. He basically talks about doing it with, uh, with Joomla as well. But um, Scott Stamper is just a longtime marketer. Guys, doing he puts out a lot of good stuff and puts out a lot of good free reports. And so, uh, if you check out his um, membership site, latest product, I think it's pretty pretty low cost download, and it gives you a lot of information. But but membership sites, you know, the thing about membership sites is that they're huge. And if you can focus on a particular niche that has a thousand people and you can grab you can grab those people and charge them nine ninety five a month is a great business model and all you have to do is provide them with regular content and you can get that content from like PLR sources or from you know just hiring a writer to write something each month uh, from doing your own videos if you're in a particular niche where you can do video tutorials uh, you can do you know just for instance what we're talking about right now I mean you could have a membership site where basically you focus on one aspect of it you talk about everything that happened that month in the industry and people pay you you know a small monthly fee to get access to that to that video which is in your membership area now, once again, this to, to start, you can start with simple as with a PayPal subscription uh, and using the, like a Joomla. Uh, in fact, that even with WordPress now, there are WordPress membership plugins, and you can hook up a WordPress blog and use a use a PayPal subscription, and you can start your own membership site just with that. Um, but it's all about content and making sure people are happy. And if you're gonna if you're gonna launch a membership site, make sure you have at least you know six months of content ready to go before that. Um, and make sure that you know you keep people motivated and, and keep adding new bonuses and and give unannounced bonuses as well to to increase retention. But um, Kelly, do you do you already have what's your what's your niche? <laughs> uh, basketball. That's interesting. Um, yeah, basketball is an interesting niche. I mean, is it in basically in, in teaching the kids how to play basketball, or is it special drills and things like that? Uh, I remember seeing some site one time where a guy was was actually teaching kids how to do drills, and and uh, but I mean, think about basketball from a parent's perspective. You could do something with all the camps that are around the country. You know, there's a lot of my 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 niece is a basketball superstar and she goes to camps every single summer she has been for like 10 years and uh, you know you could make a whole resource list of those basketball camps and also you could rate basketball camps on a scale of you know 1 to 10 and also get feedback and testimonials from those people and so you could actually use that information to uh, to generate a membership site where uh, people paid to be on your newsletter to get information about the latest basketball camps and it could also talk about students that have been to the camps and where they're at now what college level they're at you know, you could even do a Facebook group for kids right now that are into basketball, and you could do the Facebook group and tie them into the membership site, and they could get their parents to join up on the membership site to, to learn about going to these basketball camps, and at the same time, you could also give them information about what hotels to stay at, what restaurants to eat when they're near the basketball camp to save them money. So you could also negotiate and you know, workouts, and so you could also negotiate special rates with the hotel via your little basketball thing, and say, hey, look, by the way, we have a group rate. Uh, you know, it can be anything. Uh, hotels will do stuff like that all the time. Say, hey, look, I have a basketball association, and you know, there are 100 parents come here every year, and I'd like to negotiate a special rate. You might be able to, to pre-book rooms and give them uh, benefits, but the workouts as well. I mean, get the, get the workouts, and what you do also get get kids to put go on video for you and do YouTube. You can have kids, hey, show off your basketball skills, on, and I'll put your YouTube video up on my basketball site. So you get kids out in the backyard wanting to show off their basketball skills, and then they're the ones that are going to load the YouTube videos, and you can use that to drive traffic to your website. So that's an idea on, on that. Does that help? All right, who's got other? Anybody else good issues? What size number of people do you? What size number of people do you think a niche should be to set up? Uh, 
membership site. Well, what, what we talk about too all the time is that you can always find, I don't, no matter how obscure your niche is, you can always find a hundred, a, a thousand people that are in that niche and that love that information, would, would love that information. So what we try to say is, you know, there should be at least a thousand people out there. Um, but it depends. I mean, obviously you have to think about the fact that you're, you're, you're competing with. I mean, if you are really knowledgeable in a certain niche, then you can probably pull off a membership site on a wider niche. But if you really want to focus and go after, you know, a thousand people uh, who are passionate, who are no friends that are passionate, then, you know, I'd say a thousand people and work from that. But, you know, once again, it all depends on your expertise and what value you bring. I mean, I can't emphasize enough that don't, don't jump into a niche you know nothing about unless you actually have access to an expert or you have access to writers that can provide the content for you and be, the, be your moderators for your membership site. By the way, speaking of uh, membership sites, and I just mentioned Scott Stamper. And uh, if anybody's on the Warrior Forum, um, Scott just had a special offer, Warrior special offer. It's a free download of this PDF of, a, of an idea he had for a business um, that he gave some guy. And the guy made over $200,000 last year with the idea. And it's a super simple idea. And I've been starting to brainstorm how to do it myself. Um, but I recommend if you just start on the Warrior Forum, it's like warriorforum.com. Um, you can actually download this report from the Spe Worry Special Offers. Look for Scott Stamper and you'll find this report. Download it and you'll get a great, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Chris. You'll get, a, you'll get a great tip on how to create a membership site in a very unique niche that can generate you a lot of money. In fact, you know, if I didn't work for Joel, I'd probably make 10 of those sites right now. All right, who else has got a question? Yeah, I'm just checking here. Well, while everybody's done, oh, Edward, okay, hold on. Yeah, uh, a membership site could certainly be that. I mean, you know, we get, uh, I remember, you know, people gave Joel a little flack on the AdSense Secrets, too, because, well, I can find all this information online. You know, it's like, well, when Joel first wrote AdSense Secrets, you couldn't find that information online. It wasn't anywhere. Now, now Google gives it out. Now there's a thousand websites out there that they give you AdSense tips. But the thing is, do you really want to visit all those websites to spend all the time that it takes to go to all those websites to organize the information and find out you know, what it is that works and what doesn't? Or would you rather have one central location where you can get the best tips on a particular niche? And so, yeah, people are always willing to pay for things that will save them time. And that should always be one of your, one of your um, uh, focuses is to tell people that, hey, look, this information is going to save you a ton of time because it's all organized, cataloged in one place. And um, we also have a community, site, community where we discuss these and you'll have brain, brainstorm more tips. So not only am I giving the information, but people are interacting and sharing additional information as part of the community and membership that you're joining. So yeah, so focus on those little aspects and that's what people will do. AdWords. I mean, uh, Simon Leung was here uh, a couple weeks ago, and you know, he gave he gave uh, the biggest tip, which basically is make sure that your landing page is as relevant as possible to what it is you are advertising. Um, that is just like the best tip that that you can give. Uh, I mean, the, the more you know, basically be assigned a quality score based on your landing page. And so, if you're just sending them to a blog that has a thousand different topics on it, then it's not going to be worth it for you. When you can buy a domain for for ten bucks a year and hosting, either add it on to your existing account or pay you know five bucks a month for hosting, it'll save you that in at your AdWords cost by making that the most relevant landing page possible. I'm actually going to tell you a little thing. I'm a, I'm a rep for, you know, Tony Little was in the office a couple months ago, and Tony Little's got a company called Body Alive. And I'm not trying to make a shameless pitch for the company. I'm not. But they have a new product coming out, and it's no, it's a Noni Juice product. And what they have done, Noni Juice apparently has a horrible taste and a horrible smell. But millions of people love this stuff. So they have a new patent process, which is called deodorized Noni Juice. And they took the odor and the taste out of it and then put their own taste into it. So now they have the best tasting noni juice. Once again, it's gimmicks that are big sellers. So I wanted to, I wanted to run some AdWords on it and because I am a rep and I make a little money with it. And so I registered deodorized noni juice.com. We type it in here. Oh, hold on. But I want you to see what I did. This, so this is purely for AdWords. 
and of course, uh, you know, I'll get I'll get some um, I'll get some benefit from it. But that's the let me make sure it works. Does that work, Chris? Yeah. Um, so what I did was I made that separate landing page just for the deodorized noni juice, and then I ran ran AdWords on it. So now I'm paying a lower cost per click because I made that basic set page. Um, and I'm also testing, you know, different titles and stuff like that. And it's generating a few clicks right now, but no needs a, no needs a big uh, thing online, so there's a lot of competition. But anyhow, what I recommend, most relevant, re relevant landing page as possible. Make sure you test different headlines, and, and uh, those are the best tips I can give you for lowering your cost. Uh, what about offering an affiliate program and sending them right to the affiliate site or should we always make our own page on our site and then send them? Um, hold on, I'm still processing that. Um, as far as um, uh, affiliate programs go, I mean, uh, you know, the norm, the norm is to obviously put it on your own site, use your own software. Um, so... We, Oh, I got you. Um, well, two things on this one. I, I wanted to put it up quick, so I didn't create another, you know, I didn't, uh, I just wanted to get people into the site. I didn't want to join a list right now. On that particular page, I am going to put an opt-in box, but my basic thing, I'm just so busy that I said, okay, I'll make, I'll take 15 minutes and make this page and put it up and redirect them to the site for right now. So what I did was I just wanted to get them into the funnel so they'd buy the product. Um, but yes, I should do the opt-in box. And in fact, I probably will have um, a little exit pop, pop up or something saying, hey, by the way, you know, click here to join. If, you know, if they don't click that link, I'll have a full pop-up like the virtual smart agent and says, hey, why don't you, would you like to join my list and get 10 free eBooks kind of thing. Okay. Liza asks, uh, would your AdSense earnings go down? Now, I know Liza's an, an excellent writer, so I assume she's just abbreviating. You're abbreviating, right, Liza? Um, oh, yeah, you, don't, you, don't, you can't put that. That's totally against, um, you, you, cannot, you cannot tell people to click their ads or check your sponsors. It's totally against Google's uh, TOS, and you can get banned for that. So never, never do that. You can put like sponsored listings, but you can't have anything and give people any kind of incentive to click a link at all, or you can lose it. Sure, Edward. Edward's typing. Um, one thing about, um, you know, AdSense, I assume most of you have AdSense secrets and stuff. Once again, if you don't know the top five AdSense tips, they are no borders. Make sure that the ads blend in with your site. Um, it's always good to have the blue headline, black text, and light gray um, URL at the bottom. And uh, make sure that your ads are above the fold, that they're in the eye, visual eye of the reader. So that the you know basically if you and if you can put the 336 by 280, that's the top performing ad. And if you can put that into the meat of your content you'll get a higher click through as well. So those are some AdSense tips. Uh, when we create an affiliate offer on our pages, can we create an order button to send them right to the affiliate order page? Or does it have to go to the affiliate offer sales page first? Um, I'm not quite sure I follow that. I mean, basically, if you, you know, if you're putting an affiliate link to another program, you know, so you have a website, you want to put an affiliate link to another program, you can create an order button that goes, yeah, you can, yeah, you can create an order button that goes straight to any page you want, but you have to make sure that that affiliate company, or the, whoever you are promoting, has the cookie that's set on that order page, because it might only work with um, the main page. So you have to make sure you you have to make sure that you know that the cookie is set because that won't always happen. A lot of times an affiliate link will is designed so that you hit that first page and the cookie set. Um, but you can use easy ways to check that too. I mean a lot of times if you're doing an affiliate order form they'll they'll put who the sponsor is. So if you delete all your cookies on your on your system and, and re, you know close your browser, reopen it and then go straight to the order page, you know, you have to check the URL stream but anyhow, 
probably not recommended, but you know, you can check it out. Thanks for the questions, Edward, by the way. Uh, Alright, who else has questions? Or Edward, if you have another one, keep firing and this is all good stuff. We're up to 47 viewers, which is pretty good considering that Joel didn't email his list. Besides AdWords, you mean ad, uh, besides AdSense, I assume you mean other ways, other ways to monetize a, other ways to monetize a blog. Well, it depends on your niche. I mean, basically, you know, obviously, there's affiliate networks like LinkShare and Commission Junction and Performix and you know a slew of others. Uh, obviously, there's, there's Amazon and there's um, obviously ClickBank. Um, depends on your niche. I mean, if you um, if you're going to do something like a ClickBank books, what you might want to do too is to say that you. Um, you know, you actually advertise the book, or you have the th little thing in your sidebar. You can either link to that page, or you can actually click, have that link click to a, maybe a blog entry about that particular product. So blog about the product, and discuss why you bought it, and give a good review of it, and, and maybe offer an additional incentive if they buy it through you. You know, like your ad here. You know, by the way, if you, say, if you buy this ebook by, f through me, I will also give you an ad spot on my little ad page. You know, so you can give them a little incentive to buy it. So. Um, most people, a lot of people monetize with ClickBank products or they run um, you know, the little 125 by 125 buttons for different affiliate offers. It all depends on what your, um, it all depends on, oh by the way, I'm not, once again, I am not Joel Com. Uh, this is Dan Nickerson, Joel Com uh, was in Australia speaking last week and he is flying home today. So this is Dan Nickerson. I probably should clarify that throughout the, uh, throughout the, throughout the broadcast. Um, but uh, anyhow, Look at look at the what your content is and try to find relevant affiliate products for your content. And the other way to monetize a blog is to actually let people advertise on your blog. If you have decent traffic, I mean there's no reason why you can't set up a little system with PayPal saying, Hey look, would you like to purchase a one twenty five by one twenty five ad space in my little, you know, upper upper right hand unit? Um, you know, I actually run I don't do much with ads, you know, ad sense on my blog and it's really just for a uh, informational site and it's not something I post to regularly because I have so many other websites but this is my personal site on the right I threw a couple of my products that I've created um, and they have you know links to the links to the downloads and so I mean I make a little piddlance off that but but there's no reason why you can't use the same sort of format to to drive traffic to different affiliate offers yeah I, I well I should wear a name tag but I do have a lot of people that do know who I am but occasionally it, it does happen uh, what's your take on using referral ads by Google and making splash pages around a Google referral ad? Do you use this ad module? Um, I don't do much with, um, you're talking about Google's referral program, uh, I don't do much with it. Uh, I have a couple of websites where I have a, a banner ad for it. Um, but certainly, I mean, most everybody's heard of Google Ads since the net right now. But if you're generating, you know, if you're appealing to a newbie market, I mean, you can certainly make a, a page uh, touting the highlights of of AdSense, uh, joining AdSense, and at the same time you could throw in some different AdSense products on it too. You know, so this is all about AdSense, and you, you could you could throw Joel's AdSense Secrets book. At the same time, you could maybe link to some videos, and you could say, look, if you don't have an AdSense account, you know, here's here's how to join. Um, you know, AdSense. I don't know what the current uh, payout is, but it used to be pretty decent. So, uh, yeah, I should have Joel. I should have Joel on a stuck. Actually, that was a joke we had a few weeks ago. Was that I was I was Joel Dan on the stick was beginning to take a life of its own and so I said okay next week I'm gonna have Joel in a bowl and I was just gonna put Joel's picture inside a, a bowl but because you know Janice takes taken <coughs> um, the resemblance is so similar yeah he, I, don't, I don't have a I don't shave either I don't have a goatee which Joel doesn't have anymore either Joel in a bowl dot com yeah yeah I'm, I'm working on a really bad joke in my head. I'm not going to say it. Okay, who else has got a question? I told you we have more content and less banter in this in this show. Giveaway product. Oh, geez, we haven't had a, we haven't had a a giveaway yet. I sent a link to redirect page to the product page. You want to add an opt-in box? <laughs> um, but I'm worried I'm lose, I'll lose them. You know, if you have an opt-in box, I mean, you can do, there's different things you can do now, too, like uh, even with uh, Virtual Smart Agent, like we're using on AdSense Secrets, that if they actually don't use your opt-in form um, and they go to exit, you can actually have a pop-up and say, hey, look, by the way, you know, if you want the link to the product, this is this. 
you know, you can test. You can use um, you know, Google's website optimizer to actually test um, pages to see, you know, which ones convert better by actually putting a link. You know, you say, here's link, uh, no thanks, I don't wish to join a list, but please take me to the offer. You know, you can put a little hyperlink below it. But the thing is, you know, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Wholesale Gel, I was not aware of that. They have a new paper action. Oh yeah, okay, now I am familiar with that. But I need to check it out again. But um, yeah, I don't know enough about it, but I'm sorry about that, but I will check that out. It could be interesting. Mike Vilsame does the, does the what? He does the, uh, Oh, the pop-up saying, you mean the X pop-up? Too many pop -up. Yeah, people do find those annoying. They, they can be pretty effective. Um, one of the good things about like the virtual smart agent is that it helps with the clarity. In other words, if, if people are not buying because they object to something, you know, you can actually clarify objections in that box. And at the same time, you can ask questions about why aren't you buying today? And the people will give you great feedback and you can use that feedback and have it actually respond based on the keywords they're typing. It'll give an answer to them. But you also get a listing of everything they, everything they say. So you can then use that to tweak your content. And once again, if you have a list and you're doing a sales page, you know, you can say to someone, hey look, I'm launching a new sales page and it's, you know, the new product is coming out and right now we're, I'm looking for feedback on my sales page. You know, if you, if you visit my sales page right now, and give me feedback. I mean, you can actually buy the product at 50% off today if you decide to do it. But I just I would love feedback either way. If you can tell me what what's wrong, what do I need to add? You'll be amazed at how much feedback you get on something like that. Great content for your site. Our viewership is apparently going up around this time. But once again, I'm I'm Dan Nickerson. I'm filling in for Joel Combs today. Uh, usually Joel and I do the show together, but uh, Joel is in Australia uh, on his way back actually, and he will be here next week. Um, we have a giveaway today. And what we're going to give away is a great, great prize. If, who, if, I hope you people like video. And if you watch our Next Internet Millionaire show, uh, the second place winner uh, was uh, Charles Trippy. And Charles Trippy, we launched a product called Viral Video Fever. And it's basically, there's this disc one, which is uh, the basics on how to do viral video. If you go to charlestrippy.com, by the way, you can... Uh, you can learn about Charles Trippy. You don't know who he is already. Disc two is how to edit most effectively. And number three is the optimize uh, and the secrets. And then finally we have uh, the disc, the Trippy Takeover Films disc. And this is just a lot of uh, Charles Trippy's videos all on. Is it a DVD, Chris, do you know? Yep. All on DVD. And uh, Charles is a great guy and, you know, he's a huge uh, YouTube star. And uh, so I'm going to do a uh, trivia question. And whoever gets the trivia question is going to win this whole package. Does that, does that sound good? Okay, the question is, what is Charles Trippy's fiance slash maybe his wife by now? What is her name? First person to tell me what Charles Trippy's fiance slash wife is wins the viral video fever set. Nope. Nope. <laughs> No one else can guess it because BCF Live is uh, is guessing and everybody else is uh, <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Trippy. Yes, they got engaged in a hot air balloon. Sue, keep guessing. I don't know if they're married. Honestly, I don't know if they're married yet. I'm looking for the first name. There you go. Mayland's got it. The, I'll give you a hint. Mayland. That's the hint. Uh, yes, it is Allie, and yes, they did get engaged in a hot air balloon, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so Mayland, the way to get this prize is that you just need to, uh, are you Joel Com? You're just Joel Com? Yeah, I can, I'll get them. Okay, uh, Joel, uh, Chris Harper will contact you via Joel, and he'll get your address, and we'll mail that out to you. You just have to send us the uh, shipping, okay? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're very welcome. Okay, who else has got a question? We're up to 53 viewers now. <laughs> yeah, right. By the way, there's lots of cool stuff happening with our Top One Network. If you haven't joined yet, the TopOneNetwork.com. Um, it's part of our uh, top, top, if you're a member of the Top 1% Report, um, you basically get our 16-page newsletter each. Uh, don't you have a copy of that over there, Chris? 
Probably not. I, don't, I guess we didn't bring one. Well, we didn't bring one. But uh, top 1% report is our 16-page monthly newsletter, which has great stuff. This month is going to be about traffic. Um, we just filmed the uh, bonus DVD because we do a we, we do a bonus DVD every month. And Joel Ombi and I just spoke for 30 minutes yesterday about traffic. And it was like nonstop. We were going to do a little five-minute segment each with traffic tips. And I said, hey, let's just banter back and forth and, and talk about, about making, you know, getting more traffic to your website. And it turned into a 30-minute session with Joel, who you know, generates tons of traffic for us and, and uh, knows everything. And uh, it's going to be great, all part of your uh, membership. Oh yeah, free downloads. And once again, this is going to be a shameless, <laughs> shameless pitch for me. I'm trying to build up my tips forum. And so if you join my tips forum, you get 10 free ebooks. You know, which is fairly good. And it's basically here's a link to my forum. This is my site. It's a, a tips.com is a site that I've owned for 10 years. And I haven't done much of it, just too busy doing too many things. And I finally said, you know what? It's a 10 year old site. It's a four letter domain. It's a good word. Why not put a forum on there with all kinds of tips? So I just launched it a couple weeks ago. And if you join my forum, you actually get prompted to join my, my marketing tips newsletter. And uh, I have uh, tons of tips in there. And you get 10 ebooks for uh, joining for free. And at the same time, you can also. Uh, Edward, you should have gotten automatically redirected to it, and the, and the first email is um, the first email also gives the download link. Eh, it could have been a different one, but uh, once again, ten free ebooks, and at the same time, you know, if you have a tip about your niche, and I, and I can't emphasize this enough, let's just talk a little bit about generating traffic. Um, you know, the secret to traffic is building up backlinks and building up, uh, which help you both uh, driving click-through traffic to your site and also they help you organically with the search engines. And forum posting is a popular way to generate traffic that you know, helps with both. But um, I also, with the tips forum, it's designed for any niche so that if you, whatever your niche is, leave an original valuable tip, it could be 50 words, and put a link back and put a keyword optimized link in your in your tip and at the same time create a signature file with links to your other websites and so by taking five minutes just just visit forum.tips.com and there's a register there's a register link on there um, and you know by by taking five minutes to leave a valuable tip you're going to pick up you know th four or five backlinks if you want and they can be keyword optimized and as this as this forum grows you know they, they add more value um, but, but do that, you can do that a couple times a day on different sites and different forums and leave valuable content. Not only will you generate traffic, but you'll just start making a name for yourself. People will recognize you. And um, it's, it's a great way to, uh, to build exposure for yourself online and generate traffic. And the same with blog comments. You know, when you're leaving a blog comment, you, know, you can leave your domain name in, in, the, in the, the URL field. And it drives traffic. And, and some have no follow tags, but still, if you just get one click, Think, think about what you're willing to pay in AdWords per click for your niche. You know, if you're willing to pay 15, 25 cents a click, then why wouldn't you be willing to take take five minutes? You know, which if you're say you're making 50 bucks an hour, you know, so I can't even I can't even think <laughs> however much money that is. You know, think about how valuable your time is to leave something that's going to get clicks and clicks and clicks. And just think about every time someone clicks on one of those things, you're, it's like saving you 15 cents. It's a way to look at it and driving traffic. Thanks, Edward. My brain, once again, I am hungover. Unfortunately, I did go out last night. Oh, and the other thing that you know, I should discuss with our, with our company is that um, we are doing some work for a uh, fitness trainer, not Tony Little, and he's giving us all personal training. And so every Monday, Wednesday, Friday now at uh, 6.45 a.m., I have to do a workout with this personal trainer. And let me just tell you, it's tough, especially when you're hungover. But there'll be less of me each week, which is nice. BCF, I was just in Florida last week. Um, I'm looking at Keith. Yes, deep linking is always good. Uh, hold on. All right. Malin, I am not familiar with site siloing. Is that is that deep linking? Is that what we're talking about? And Edward, yes, walking is good. 
I have a diet uh, I plan I wrote up on one of my sites a while back and I called it the WWW diet and it's called basically it's walking willpower and uh, water walk more get more willpower and drink lots of water WWW diet it's ways to build out sites and you know I that does that does sound familiar Yes, if you gotta, yeah, if you gotta, yeah, if you gotta build out links, just don't link everything back to your main website. Um, link everything back to a, you know, a, a subsite. And a mistake that a lot of people make, and it just amazes me, is that when you're when you're posting links anywhere on the web, always post a link that you control. Never post an affiliate link. You want a link that you control that will generate traffic for you forever. So if you have a primary domain for that or whatever your domain is. Create a redirect for your affiliate link and always post those links because that will generate more traffic for you in the long term. And, you know, and there's stories and, and uh, I keep talking Scott Stamper because I just read his stuff the other night. But he talked about one thing, an ebook he gave away, uh, where he tracks, basically he's tracking a link from one, an ebook that he gave away years ago, and it generates like, you know, 10,000 hits a month that he can't access because it goes he knows it goes somewhere else but he can't do anything with it because it's hard coded in all these ebooks that he gave away years ago yeah and if you have cPanel you can do it uh, instantly in a minute and there's uh, you know there's JavaScript uh, redirects and things you can use you look, look for look for a meta meta refresh redirect you can use there's JavaScript redirects there's PHP redirects they're very simple to set up what I do is I actually take the redirects and I have a little notepad file that I keep in my desktop so when I want to do a quick redirect, I simply just place the URL into that redirect code that's in the little notepad file. I save it as a .html for, for whatever product I'm doing and I upload it. And literally you can do that in, in seconds. Bookmarking Demon. Once again, I am not up on everything that's out there. Can, do you have a link to Bookmarking Demon? I, I would be curious to take a look at it. If bookmarking demon is something that goes out there and builds links for you, you do have to be very careful about doing that. I don't, I don't like to give anybody control over where my links are going, because you can have links put in bad neighborhoods and things can affect you, and you have to be careful. All right, let me see if I can pull this up here. I am pulling up bookmarking demon, social bookmarking software. Edwin Soft. No, unlimited supply of high PR backlinks is a stretch right there. But see, now well, here's a quick little copy suggestion. You know, when you have um, something like get unlimited supply of, you know, you're better off saying you know get you when know, a 1,275 high PR backlinks. Now, that that's a better term for than than using the word unlimited because people won't believe you. Uh, that it's unlimited and you'd be more apt. I'm not trying to, I know it's, your, it's not your site, but I'm just saying from a general copy perspective, be specific instead of being broad because people will believe you more. All right. There's a little thing. Well, this looks interesting. I would, uh, I'd have to check more into it, but I'd always be wary of these things and, and what I'll say is basically, um, yeah, there you go. Um, like, I'm just reading. Hold on one second. Um, just to finish up on that point um, about bookmarking demon, I don't, I don't know about that product, but whenever you, before you buy something like that, Google it. Just say, just Google bookmarking demon and then use the word, you can use the word scam or fraud. And the, what happens is it'll, anything that comes up, you'll find out people discussing or talking about it. And a lot of times you'll find people talking about it on things like Warrior Forum or Digital Point. And you'll get, you'll get unbiased reviews about whether it works or not. Um, invalid refer when I try to register. Really? Oh, you must have typed something in. I don't have the referral program set up right now, so that might be why you're getting an error there. Just, just, I just leave it blank. Um, as far as when you join the when you join the list, I don't I don't send the ebooks. You actually get redirected right after you join the list. You get a redirect to that page, and at the same time, the very first uh, email after you confirm has a link to the download as well. Long form sales letters still work. 
um, video is um, it didn't redirect. All right, well I'll check. Whoever joins the list, when I when I get off, I'll make sure that I'll I send you an email too that make sure you, you know that you get the link. But it should it should redirect. Oh wait, I don't know how to change. I might have changed it. But once again, to get the first email, there's a download link. Long form sales letters still work. Yes, um, the whole thing about long form sales letter it depends how complex it is, what it is you're selling, and how much you have to basically convince someone to sell them, um, and how how long it takes to be clear about what it is they're getting. The more objections you overcome in a sales letter, the more you'll convert. So you know, look to overcome as many objections as possible. At the same time, if you're an established name and have some presence and a certain amount of trust with you, you can get you can get by with a shorter page. Um, and perhaps a video, but uh, the reason that most you'll see so many long form sales letters is that they work. And once again, people always say, and people that aren't internet marketers say, like, I hate those long form sales letters. You know, it's like, you know, I never buy from a long form sales letter. Well, the reason that people do it is because they test. I mean, marketers test short form and long form and video and everything, and they go with what works the best. So, long form sales letters still work. That's why you still see them all the time. Yeah, you can have long sales without a boring sales letter. I actually uh, just came up with a product idea today, um, and I'm going to do a extremely, it's going to be like a squeeze page size sales letter because the product is so simple to explain that I can't do much more with it, and the price is going to be so cheap that people are just going to hopefully just buy it. And um, I don't doesn't need a long form sales letter. So. Uh, and once again, we really tout about video. I mean, the more video you can use, um, the more, the better. Uh, and uh, one more thing in the long form sales, we have another product coming out. We don't have a, a launch date on it, but I'm actually writing the sales copy right now for it. And it is a fairly long sales letter just because the product has so many features uh, and every single feature really adds to the value proposition of the product that I'm including it. Glad to the best way to launch a product and get the big JV partners to work with you. Um, well, I assume that's, you know, I'm not going to go the best way to launch products, but as far as getting big JV partners to work with you, I mean, you need to have a product that really adds value and is something original that other people haven't seen. Um, you know, you can send, there's different things online that will show you how to, to uh, do a JV letter. But basically, you can't just say to a big JV partner, say, my name's so-and-so, I want you to promote this product, uh, here's the link. You can't do that. You could say to someone, write an email saying, "Hey, look, I, I do you know my name is so and so, and I love your products. I just purchased your latest product X, and it's really added a ton of value to what I'm doing, and I really appreciate it. Um, I'm actually I'm launching a new product, which I think would be perfect for your market. And uh, these are the benefits, and uh, it's a very low cost, you know, price point. And look, once you know, once again, emphasize how you know them, why you're you're on their list. I've been on your list for a long time." And these are the, you know, this is what I love about your stuff. And I just bought this. And by the way, I have this new product. I'd love you to take a look at it. Uh, I know you're super busy. Um, here's it. Here's the benefits. Here's what you, you know, if you if you decide to be an affiliate, here's what you would promote. And you can also automatically sign them up um, if it's as simple as say, I already have your affiliate link if you're interested. But once again, don't just say my name's so and so. I want you to sell for me. Do a personal letter. Give as much information as possible. Tell them how they're going to benefit. Tell them how their list is going to benefit. And don't lie. Just be honest. Once again, you're not going to attract the big JV partners unless you have a really unique product uh, and unless they can make a lot of money on it, basically. Uh, what about huge contests with with great prizes? Um, as far as those go, those those can be you know incentives. You know, it's funny is um, a lot of these guys like Joel and Mike Fulsam and those guys they get all kinds of great stuff. They get these flat screen TVs, they get video cameras, they get they get uh, trips, they get all kinds of stuff. And there was one guy that just sent out a new thing. It was actually um, I, I don't know the name of it, but if you're creative, because these guys have everything, in other words, all these gurus that make a lot of money, they, they have all the toys they want. What they want is they want something really, truly unique. So there are certain uh, contest sites out there that actually have unique prizes, whether it be a skydiving trip or there's something where you can actually you get points towards like these exotic vacations. And so for a certain amount of money, you can, you can send somebody something really unique. And if you make those unique gifts, then, then yeah, you can attract attention. But the important thing is to, uh, if, you can, if you can land one big JV partner, uh, it, that'll help you land more because you can say, hey, look, so-and-so, you know, I'd love to have you promote this. I've already, like, I've already got Joel Kahn promoting. He's agreed to promote. He loves my product. 
and because that person will just go straight to Joel and say, "Hey, Joel, did uh, do you really believe? Uh, was this was this a really good product? Should I promote it?" And Joel's going to say yes or no, and he's not going to say, "I don't want your products. I want to make a lot of money." All these guys work together, and they and they talk about this stuff. So, once again, if you can land one big guy, you know it's worth it, and I recommend it. Uh, my favorite traffic building method. Um, I basically focus on, you know, I have a large site network, and so my favorite traffic building network is actually just uh, interlinking between my sites that are all on different class CIPs, and it's all about organic search for me. Um, and also, uh, you know, I do some mailing lists that drive traffic back to my websites. Aside from that, I also do a little bit of AdWords, uh, and I wish I had uh, more time to build my own backlinks. I probably should pay someone to build backlinks for me, but. Uh, for what, I, for what I do, my traffic is okay, and uh, I, like I said, I, I basically create products for Joel, as you people know, and uh, so most of my focus, time focused is building his products, and I still have my websites, and I'm trying to build up my, my tips for him right now, so that's my latest uh, project there. And Networth, you're, you're, you're welcome. Wow, we're up to 71 viewers. What's up with that? Those of us just joining us, um, my name is Dan Nickerson. Uh, Joel Com is not here today. Joel was in Australia, and uh, he is. Uh, we'll be back next week. But I'm his normal sidekick, sitting usually over here. And uh, today we've just been focusing on straight content, not talking about Joel's funny toys or his trips or his uh, monkeys. Yes, we only had one monkey. The screaming monkey's already flown today. Uh, or and there's no Dan on the stick either. Like I said, Dan on the stick was burned up in a fire. Thanks, Edward. Uh, we usually go uh, an hour. Uh, we can take a few more questions though. So who else has some questions? Did uh, you get Malin's information, by the way? Yes. Oh, and what we didn't do is uh, for those of you, do you have that link for? Uh, I don't have Joel's direct one. Just go to uh, well, the, you have the Ads and Secrets one. Do you get the idea but it's like video or viral or something? If you go, just go to Google, type in uh, Joel Com and uh, viral video fever. You'll probably get a link there. Uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to throw up, I forgot to throw up a link too for, uh, once again, we gave away Malin won our contest today. We gave away Charles Trippy's viral video fever, which is if you're ever looking to do YouTube videos and try to generate viral traffic to your site via YouTube, then this is what you need. This is just a, Charles Trippy is a very entertaining, very funny guy. You go to charlestrippy.com, you can pick up his stuff, but we're going to give you a link to, uh, to buy Viral Video Fever if you are through, uh, through Joel's. Yes, Viral Video Fever. We're actually looking for Joel's affiliate link for a shameless plug. And BCF, uh, I guess your other message, uh, yes, I will take care of that for you, you after the show. Thank you. I think you just said it. Uh, what is my feeling on real estate? Training for JV lists. I'm confused. Um, you're trying to see if people would join venture with you to promote a real estate training course. Um, well, you're not going to get um, you're not going to get internet marketers, uh, traditional internet marketers, to promote something like that unless it, it really suits their particular niche. Um, there are probably a number of um, uh, people that real estate gurus that might promote it but you need to have something that's really solid and you know I know you'd have to look at your uh, real estate uh, course to see what it is but uh, you know a lot of people drive traffic with real estate sites via Craigslist you know so you could offer a real estate training uh, via Craigslist and those kind of things um, but it depends on the particular niche once again if you're gonna do something with training these days with really be real estate you know focus on the real micro niche Part of it, in other words, try to focus on something very specific about real estate training, whether it be just one aspect of increasing the value of a house via what do they call it, stage, staging or something like that, um, and use that as your squeeze page. So, in other words, if you're going to generate traffic like via AdWords, don't don't do AdWords campaign. This is real estate training. You know, click here for real estate training. You know, do something on a particular aspect of what it is you're teaching. So, break down your course based on all the different aspects of it, and then target your AdWords to these particular niches, because there'll be less competition for that niche. And if you have a relevant landing page that talks about, I'm just going to use that staging example, which is a way to increase the value of your home by bringing in furniture, or hanging pictures, and painting, and things like that. Um, if you do, if you use that technique. Um, of creating a relevant landing page and then having relevant AdWords like, you know, 
you know, we train how do you do, we train you how to do real estate staging or whatever the headline, the short headline is going to be. Um, it's a much better way to get tar more targeted traffic. It'll save you on AdWords and it'll it'll drive people into your course. So that's a quick quick tip there. Yeah, give them good content. Um, how do, I make, my, how do I make my opt-in list not hate me? You know, I did the top 10, li 10 list today, and last week somebody suggested that I do uh, top 10 reasons to uh, opt out of a list or something as a joke as a joke list. And so I was messing with that, and so it's, I said, screw it, I'll just do top 10 reasons to watch Joel.com live today. But uh, your opt-in list shouldn't hate you. Um, you, cannot, you cannot email them that much. Uh, I see people make the mistake all the time. You know, once again, if you're, you just got on my tips newsletter, I send out... Uh, you get the initial email, then a couple days later you get an email with full of tips, and then you get another couple days later you get more tips, and then the fourth day you get a tip and maybe telling you to visit this web, web page that I have, and then I have emails like every four days, but they all have value. Once once again, Edward said it well, you know, it's all about value, 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 value. If you don't provide value in everything you do online, then you're, you're going to miss out. And same like when I talk about doing forum posts or blog posts, you know, these new people like say you know go go make a go make blog comments and you know you can pick up backlinks well don't make a blog comment hey i loved your story thank you and submit expect that to get approved take the time take the minute two minutes to write a quality long post and not only will you get approved 90 percent of the time but you'll also have people start respecting what it is and and if you leave the quality they're going to click on your link to find out hey this guy is really sharp i'm going to click on his link to find out what he's doing online and that's where you pick up traffic. So it's all about value, and creating value every day in what you do. All right, one last question, because I know Chris has plenty of work to do, and so do I, so. Did I miss anybody's question? <coughs> do I like, do I like, yes, yes, I like Coldplay. That, that is, I'll take one more internet marketing question. Um, I do have Coldplay in my, actually, in my, uh, my disc changer in my car right now. All right. Well, no one has any more questions. Next weekend, uh, Scoo. Never heard of Scoo. Never seen you before. I want to use my experience developing a mystery and running large to advise companies how. Well, first off, you could work for us for free, and then we would, you know, give you a good testimonial. So that's one way you can do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, always going to be thinking. Um, if you have experience, you know, developing and ministering and running websites and want to advise people, you know, the best thing you can do is create a website touting what, what it is you do. Um, you know, being a consultant, another thing is get on, get on things like uh, LinkedIn, get on things like Facebook, talk about and give people free advice about, you know, the lessons that you've learned being an administrator for these large sites. Do a report, the top 10 things, top 10 mistakes that most big websites make, you know, do things like that, articles like that, drive them all back to your like landing page and then off, offer your services. But at the same time, if you see a large site that's making a mistake based on your expertise, email them and say, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'm a consultant and I do this. I just want to say I was on your website the other day, which I thought was great, but I noticed that you're making, you're making this error and I think if you fixed it, it could, it could, it could really affect you, increase your performance or whatever. And just send them an email, don't, don't pitch them anything. Just put your little signature line and just say, "Hey, you know, that's it." And so, you, you know, if you uh, if you like my advice, just leave a comment on my blog. And then you get someone that they'll come back and they say, "That was a great." Hey, thank you so much for giving us that tip. We did it. What you said it was great. And then you're building up comments and testimonials. And all you did was look at sites on. You know, I look at sites all day long, and I say, "Oh, I can't believe they're doing that. What, why are you doing that?" You know, I, I should just email those people and say, hey, look, can you, can you please, uh, if you fix this, I think it'll increase your conversions. And, um, you know, if you, if you like the advice I gave you, can you could you visit my uh, blog and leave a comment? Do that all day long. You can do that for any niche and uh, generate more traffic to your site via comments and links. Don't spam. Just give them good, solid advice, and they're going to thank you for it. All right, that's going to be it. We're going to wrap up for this week's show. Uh, Malin was the winner. BCF Live, yes, I'll respond to you in just a second. Um, my big tip for the day, which I'll reiterate one more time, was that uh, I get Prevention Magazine. I talked about this in the first of the show, but most people missed it. Uh, I get Prevention Magazine, and we're talking about copywriting and how to get ideas for copywriting. And they send this little thing out called the Flat Belly, Female Belly Fat Cure, okay? It's this 23-page, full-color ad 
ad for a book. But the copy is fantastic, and it, it has headlines, and it has all the right colors, there's bullet points, it's all visually appealing to the eye, your eyes flow through the thing. So what I'm getting at is when you get stuff like this in the mail, look at it, because millions of dollars went into the market research that made this 23-page document, and it's like invaluable to your, to your copywriting. Does that sound good? Kelly, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Liza, if someone has a question, I'll keep answering, but I know Chris has work to do, and so do I, so. Thanks for your advice. If you guys like it, hey, uh, leave a comment on the show. We'll make Joel jealous if I get more comments than him. If you, if you enjoyed the content, uh, just leave a comment below about today's show, and or give us a good rating, and uh, next week we'll be back with Joel, and there'll be more banter and probably less content, so I apologize for that right now. Anyhow, everyone have a great day. Thank you, and uh, we're signing off.